ladies and gentlemen, Gary Slice and Bernie Finkelstein. Here we are. My best pal. It all worked. <laughs> anyway, to quote our uh, tonight's honoree, nothing worth having comes without some kind of fight. Got a kick at the darkness till it bleeds daylight. Bruce Coburn has been kicking at the darkness for over 40 years now, attempting to right the wrongs and give voice to those that have none. My father, Alan, and I have both respected Bruce as an artist and humanist since his early coffeehouse days on Yorkville Avenue. My dad was so impressed with a highly successful United Way charity concert that Bruce headlined at Toronto's Convocation Hall back in the 70s that he personally presented Bruce with an award. The two of us have watched and listened like the rest of Canada as Bruce progressed to become not only a successful international recording artist, but equally important, a songwriter with a sense of purpose, shining a light on dark issues. To borrow the lyric from another of his songs, Bruce continues the fight to let the bad air out. I'm honored to be here tonight uh, with Bruce, with Gary, and with all of you. Thank you. As we know, Bruce has traveled to the far corners of the earth and to the far corners of Canada in his quest to make the world a better place. But after all is said and done, it's his songs that make the difference. And in these digital days, the songs travel near the speed of light each and every day over and over again. But not only do they move at the speed of light, they bring light to the world. So whether it's the refugees on the Rio Lacatoon, in If I Had a Rocket Launcher, the Haida in British Columbia and their fight for their rights in stolen land, whether it's the environment crying out for relief and attention in If a Tree Falls, or just two children in a playground growing up under the cloud of the Cold War and lovers in a dangerous time, it's these songs and ever so many more that make Bruce Coburn so special. The marriage of his songs and his work are seamless, and that's why we're here tonight. Let's take a look at this uh, video here. Art, before it's anything else, it has to be honest. Then you can, once you have honest art that's, that's trying to be good art, then you can think about how it relates to the rest of what's going on around it. If I had a rocket launcher, I would retaliate. It really was uh, amazing to see, you know, a pacifist, a uh, caring person, but faced with the outrage of what he saw in the situation of the Guatemalan refugees in South Mexico, responded with this very passionate and um, beautiful uh, song. And they call it the Under the guise of freedom of everything, we are faced with a greater and greater degree of authoritarian uh, authoritarianism, and um, we all have to resist that. Bruce's engagement in this kind of work is, is not new. There's no hype. He's not trying to do this to try to advance his career at all. It's, it's a lot deeper. He has a very clear vision of social justice, a very clear vision of what justice means. It's good for everybody to be involved in what's going on because you, I mean, you're either involved consciously or unconsciously, you know, so you might as well make it conscious. The tree falls in the forest. Does anybody hear? Well, Bruce's music is, is like all great iconic music. It transcends language, it transcends intellect, it goes right to the heart, to the soul. He's just an inspiration, I think. Anybody here? The forest falls. His lyrics speak to social justice, to environmental issues. He's been in the media speaking about environmental and social issues for, for decades. Um, he really speaks from the heart. For the saw firsthand the impact of, of landmines on people's lives and became a very strong supporter of the campaigning to ban landmines. He's been able to translate those experiences into poetry, into song, into movement and advocacy. He connects the quality of his work with the world that he, he wants to live in. 
and he's not afraid to use his skills and his talents to change the world in a way that it will become what he thinks we should be living in and how we should live. I, at no point do I feel like, there, can, can I look at those people in, in, in Central America or people in, in Mozambique and say, oh well, too bad folks, you know, <laughs> that's the luck of the draw. When you're waiting for a miracle. I think the thing that's drawn me to his music all these years is that I think Bruce has always been honest. He's never done it for the glory or the fame. I think he just had to say it. The most significant of Bruce's many contributions are not the specific causes he has supported, which have been many, but his steadfast commitment to use his musical mastery and innovation to reflect, inspire, and participate in the conscious movements of people around the world. Forces that threaten native people's freedom and sovereignty of, over their land and ability to maintain the kind of, whatever kind of life they want are several and are the same forces that threaten that same kinds of things for people all over the world. And thank you for all the efforts that you have made over the years to help us and educate us to, uh, to maintaining a better world. Warm congratulations, Bruce. You deserve all the credit that you get. May you continue to write and play songs that inspire people struggling for justice. Sums up, uh -huh. looks okay. Gives me extreme pleasure to be able to tell you that Bruce has asked the Slate Family Foundation to donate their very generous gift of $30,000 to the following two organizations. $20,000 to the USC, also known as the Unitarian Service Committee, and $10,000 to Unison, the relief program for Canadian music community. And now we have Garrett. <laughs> We rehearsed this, Bernie. And now we have the great honor to present this year's Alan Slate Humanitarian Spirit Award to Bruce Coburn. Thank you very much. A tiny mountain or an iceberg broken off from somewhere. Um, thank you guys for the kind words. I'm greatly honored to be the recipient of this year's Humanitarian Spirit Award. I think it's wonderful that there is an award honoring the spirit of our concern for each other's well-being. That spirit is easily eclipsed by the less kindly things we humans get up to. The more we can do to nurture it, the better. The honor is real, and I'm very pleased that you saw fit to think of me, to allow me the privilege of directing where the monetary part of the award should go. I'm not sure I've done anything special to uh, merit this. I think each of us has a moral responsibility to share what we can of our material and personal resources especially those of us for whom life is less precarious than it is uh, for many of our sisters and brothers. The world is full of pain, and anything we can do to lessen the amount of it is to the good. When I was young, I didn't think much about it, other than to feel sorry for people going through hard times. As I traveled, though, and saw up close how hard times can be, that started to change. The human condition has a built-in misery quotient but there is often an identifiable cause and effect as well. In the developing world, I found over and over again that the economic structure that allows me to live as I do is built on the requirement that the poor live as they do. It was a disturbing discovery. I understood that I had to make a choice between ignoring that fact and doing what I could to offset it. Ignoring it seemed just plain wrong. My parents provided me with a pretty strong moral framework. 
The first time I received a sizable amount of money, it was clear that I had to share some of the bounty. I looked around for some trustworthy entity to give it to. My then mother-in-law was very close friends with a woman who headed a charitable agency called the Unitarian Service Committee of Canada, Dr. Lada Hitchmanova. She was a colorful, warm, and utterly committed person of great intelligence and energy. I felt I could rely on USC to put my ill-gotten gains to good use. That was in 1970. Things just kind of went on from there. From periodic donations, my relationship with the NGO community evolved to where it included travel to some of the places where money becomes action. Central and South America, parts of Asia and Africa. I had adventures, encounters, which fed songs, which led to more travel. Now and then I get asked what current issue I'm working on. Well, for one thing, I'm not the one doing the work. I just try to say what I see. But in any case, there's really only one issue. How we treat each other, and by extension, how we treat the planet that gives us life. Everything. Thanks. Everything, all the specifics flow from that. We are under orders to love our neighbor. Can we tell ourselves we're doing that if we stand by and watch her starve because of climate change? Or be victimized by repressive or corrupt leaders raking what they can off the system? There's only one boat, and we're all in it together. So thank you, Canadian Music Week. Thank you, Slate Family Foundation. Thank you, Canadian Radio, for allowing the songs to get out and be heard. And last but not least, thanks, Bernie, for being consistently supportive of all the extracurricular activity. <laughs> Have a good night, everybody. Thanks.